Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Chidi from the Ultimate Guide Group, your go-to place for all things adulting. So make sure you like this video and let's get started. Oh, and also subscribe to our channel. So today I wanted to run through the cost of living crisis and basically how it is that you can prepare yourself for this cost of living crisis and as we move into what most likely will be a recession. So if you've heard the news, you've listened to podcasts, you've seen all of the various different things as it relates to interest rates, inflation, energy crisis, all of that kind of stuff, war in Ukraine, in all of that kind of stuff. There is so much that is happening right now, which is impacting the market. And so as a result, impacting the cost of living, i.e. your shelter, your food, Food, your bills all of that kind of stuff are all increasing and for those who may not know inflation is essentially where the cost of living so as I mentioned the food that you buy the bills that you need to pay rent or mortgages that you need to pay are increasing higher than your wages are increasing so you'll see that you know a normal Audi or Tesco shop would have previously cost you 50 pounds but now it costs you a hundred pounds but your salary hasn't increased double fold so five different things I wanted to flag that you should think about doing while we are in this cost of living crisis and most likely are going to go into a recession. Before I get started, I just want to give a quick disclaimer. Obviously, I'm not a financial professional. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm literally just telling you some of the things that I'm doing to prepare myself as we get into slightly tighter financial months. Number one, and actually quite importantly, manage your payments. And this is actually incredibly important for those who have recurring subscriptions or have things that come out on a monthly basis, like direct debits or standing orders. So for me, I have a number of different subscriptions. I have my Netflix, I have my Hulu, I have my Amazon Prime, and I also have um, previously two gym memberships. So as a result, I was forking over about 500 pounds. Probably I didn't need to be forking over. What I ended up doing is talking to my sister and also talking to my family members and working out where we could like double up or use the same subscription service. So I went from having two Amazon accounts, now only having one, and we each contribute to the Amazon subscription account. I also now only have one gym membership and I make a concerted effort to go to that gym to make it all worth my while, rather than having two separate ones and spending nearly 400 pounds on that gym or on those gym memberships and just working out ways that you can creatively think about reducing your spend and reducing your bills thing and my second tip would be to budget realistically look at your last couple of month statements in particular last month statement and work out what it is that you need to be doing for you to be able to budget realistically recognize that it's not helpful for you to pick out a number from thin air and say i'm going to spend a hundred pounds on food whereas you actually spend about like 150 per week and I think that's incredibly important to recognize that there's no problem doing what it is that you want to do. So there are people that really like to go to fancy dinners, people who really want to travel, people who really want to buy designer items. None of that stuff is bad, but you just want to make sure that your budget reflects who it is that you want to be and what it is that you value. If you care about going to fancy dinners, if you care about traveling, if you care about buying designer stuff, just making sure that that is budgeted into your budget. So if you are able to buy a designer bag outright, perfect. But if it will take you three to six months or a year to be able to save up realistically with the things that are necessary for you to pay for, for you to be able to save for that designer bag, again, absolutely perfect. We have a budgeting template in the description box and I definitely would suggest you using that. In essence, that is the same way that I was able to budget for my house, budget for the house I'm about to buy, budget for my car, for my holidays. A number of different things are have been really useful using that budget tracker so i definitely would suggest you purchase it again link is in the description box also have a think about your expenses for your previous month and what expenses you are going to have in your current month for example if you have birthdays that all happen in october or happen in november or happen in december make sure you're factoring that into your budget if you're planning on buying christmas presents again make sure you're thinking about that so that you're not having to spend or put a lot of money on your credit card or anything like that if you're thinking again about going on holiday you need eight months or six months or ten months to be able to save for it make sure you're budgeting that into your next month's budget Think realistically about what it is you're going to be doing for the next 30 days, 28 days, 31 days, and factor that into the budget that you create for your next month. 
be realistic and make sure that your budget actually reflects who you want to be, the values that you hold and the things that you've committed to. Number three, talk about it. Normalize talking about money. It's not so much for you to be able to be like, oh, this person earns that much and that person earns this much. That kind of stuff is interesting, but actually not important for what it is that we need to be thinking about when we're going into or when we're in this cost of living crisis and potentially going into a recession. The focus on talking about money and normalize talking about it with your friends, people in your industry, so you can work out ways that they are making money or being able to cut costs or look at various different creative ways of minimizing their expenses and see if you can do the same. Has your friend been able to set up a side hustle that actually you could quite easily set up? Are they invested in, in a stream of income or in an asset that's actually providing them quite a significant stream of income? Are they asking for promotions? Are they in your industry and looking at various different places? for job offers, job opportunities, different ways that they can make money, speaking engagements. Talking about money, again, isn't really about working out what that person's salary is, but more than anything is working out whether or not there's anything that you can learn from what it is that they are doing. It's important that we get to grips with and make it less of a taboo to talk with your friends, your family members, people in your industry about the job that you're doing and about the expenses that they're potentially saving, the income streams that they're building, the money that they're making so that you can see if you can implement that into your daily life. Number four, and I hate to say it, hate to be that person, sometimes you just gotta make more money. You just gotta find a way to make more money. Again, there are many different ways that you can do so. And if you haven't yet watched my how to create six streams of income or build out another stream of income, I would really suggest going watching that video. And that basically explains to you how it is that you go from A to B in building out your income streams. And sometimes you've just got to get more money. You've just got to find a different way so that you're not relying on just one stream of income. Can you sell some of your unwanted clothes? Can you pick up some additional shifts at work? Other ways that you can almost guarantee you getting yourself a bonus. For example, if you need to put in a certain amount of hours, if you need to do a certain amount of projects, if you need to get a level of review, is there a way that you can enforce or encourage yourself to hit those different KPIs so the bonus that you get is sizable to help you through this cost of living crisis? And one thing actually that I thought was incredibly helpful and I think people should do more often and I think people in the States do this a little bit better. Those of you who are in the States who are watching this video, let me know if this is something that you've tried before. But there's this thing called house hacking, which is basically, I think, I think it's a, that's the term. Let me know if I've got that wrong, anybody in the States, while, when I describe it. But it's essentially where you um, go to a friend or family member's house and Airbnb your spot as a result of the fact that you're no longer in the house, right? So if you have a two bedroom place and one week you decide that you're actually just gonna go and stay with your friend for a week, then you're able to Airbnb that spot and split the profits. Or even if you have a one bedroom flat, maybe you want to put that on Airbnb. And again, go and live with your, go and stay with your friend and then you split the profits and you can do it vice versa and a number of people do this and i know a number of my friends actually do this where they rent their room for short-term lets and are able then to get some money and an additional stream of income while also being able to spend time with friends and chill at home. So I definitely would suggest if you have any friends that have an additional room, a spare room, or happy to stay with you for a week, think about putting your space on Airbnb or their space on Airbnb and switch in between the two weeks and find out a way that you can actually make an additional stream of income through short-term lets. Number five, and I actually think most importantly, if you're able to implement any of the four steps that I mentioned earlier and it actually make a difference, you're already in a very privileged position. And again, if you're watching this video, you probably have access to a smartphone, access to some sort of internet connection, and also are able to watch this video online. So again, you're in a pretty privileged position, but there are a number of us who were struggling even before the pandemic hit, even before the cost of living crisis started. And so if there's any way that you can help those who are really in need, who are struggling now through this cost of living crisis, after just finishing the pandemic, and as a result of them not having enough funds or enough um, income streams to help themselves, then definitely think about a way that you can give back. Can you sell and or donate any of your clothes? Can you provide any 
toiletries, any money or anything like that that can help people through this really difficult time. So hey guys, thanks so much for joining us on this video. Are there any other tips that you would suggest for anybody who's feeling the pinch a little bit as we move into this cost of living crisis and perhaps moving towards a recession? Please do put it in the comment section below. Look forward to hearing from you guys and thanks so much. Also, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Also follow us on Instagram. I did a post on this in case you want to digest the content that way. And I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.